I want to tell a story. Um, I've told part of it already in another video about when I was a teenager going into high school. <clears throat> a UFO experience. It's a long line of experiences. Um, it, I suppose it started... I've been thinking long about how to do this video. I don't really... I'm just going to do it. Like I usually do. I usually do things, videos on one take. Just, it is what it is. If I screw up, I screw up. I try to correct myself. But I think it's best to just do it on one take whenever possible. Because, um... You get the vibe of the real person. You know, it's not staged. It's not, you know, take six, I screwed up. Oh, God, you know, whatever. I am who I am, you know, and I want people to... I want to relay that. Uh, I think it's just better. So it all started when I was probably four or five years old. Me and my sister used to stay at my grandparents' house during the day, and my my father, usually my father, would pick us up when he got home from work and take us home. My grandparents' house, let's just say, was here, and about, without any trees between them, my great-grandmother's house was over here, about a football field away, maybe, and directly across the street from her house was some, a neighbor's house. And in, in the middle of that triangle was like a 70, 80 foot spruce tree. I know the measurements because I do bucket truck work now and I know trees, I do tree work. So I'm guessing, you know, looking back, that tree had to have been like 70, 80 feet tall. Whatever, that doesn't really matter. So my father came to pick us up after work one night, one evening, and it was dark out. He comes in the house, and I remember this. I remember this, even though I was four or five. He says something to my grandfather, and they start looking out the door. When well, my sister runs over, she looks out the door. And my grandmother says, wait here. She goes and looks out the door. So I'm confused. So I start going, my grandmother had come back in the living room. I start going towards the door to look out the door to see what's out there and my grandmother grabs me by the arm pulls me back into the middle of the living room and she goes you don't want to see you don't want to see all panicked so i just sit there i was a pretty good kid i think you know i did it as i was told i just sat there and waited and they get on the phone with my great grandmother and they're talking to her she sees whatever is out there and they get on the phone with the neighbors. They see what is ever out there. So everybody is looking at this thing, terrified. Well, I don't know how my father and grandfather reacted, but my grandmother was terrified, which made me a little scared. Now, I didn't know what it was until I was probably in my late teens. I talked to my sister about it. She told me it was a UFO sitting directly on top of the spruce tree just sitting there, long enough for everybody to get a good look at it. Um, everybody saw it. And my grandmother was really shaken up. Fast forward, I didn't have another experience. Oh, no, 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 I see, I see I'm screwing up. That's all right. Um, doesn't mean I'm telling lies. It's just, I screw up. So fast forward, I'm seven or eight years old. I'm laying in bed. I fall asleep. Something wakes me up, but I, 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 it, I it's like a, a dream, but one of those very, very vivid dreams. And the school bus is waiting for me out, outside, but I know I'm in bed. That shouldn't be a school bus out there. So I look out my curtain, because my, the head of my bed was right at the window, right, the edge of the window was right at where my head lays. I look out the curtain, and then, sure enough, there's a school bus driver standing in front of the school bus. The school bus is on the lawn across the street. Now that struck me odd right away. And the school bus looked like a school bus, but the wheels, they were just black. And it was dark out, it was nighttime. But I could see, sort of. And the wheels were black. 
so I couldn't even see if they were tires, you know. The man, the bus driver, standing in front of it, why that was happening struck me odd, too. He was wearing, like, an old-fashioned mechanic's jumpsuit. And his face was blurry, but he didn't look right. So I just stared at it for a few minutes, thinking, I'm not going to school, because I hated school anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to school. So he says to me in my head, it's time to go. It's time to go. You have to go. You have to go. And he gets more and more aggressive. Now I'm getting scared. He knows it. And I see his eyes. I'm like, I can't even see his eyes. I don't know what's going on. I see his eyes and they're not right. How they weren't right, I couldn't tell you. Thinking back, they just weren't the right color. They were like yellow, and then they were kind of reddish, and they were yellow again. They were orange. It was weird. And he almost had a reptilian look to him. He just did not look right. And I've never seen a bus driver wear a jumpsuit. The bus wasn't right. The bus was on the grass. He was outside of the school bus, waiting. The bus wasn't running because it wasn't making any noise. Nothing was right about this picture. So now I'm scared. I get under my covers and kind of hide. And I feel him on the ledge outside my window. Because outside my window was a sunroom. So the roof was like a foot below the bottom of my window. I feel him outside that window up against the glass. Come on, you have to come. It's time to go. And he's getting very, very aggressive and very, very mad. And he's talking to me. I'm horrified. Somehow, I don't even know if I passed out and went back to sleep or whatever. Now, I'm not saying what this was. And I'm not saying this is any more than a dream. But this dream haunted me my whole life to a certain point. And this part of why I'm sharing it now. So, I, like I said, I was seven or eight years old, whatever. That happened after what happened when I was four or five. Now, now fast forward, I'm a teenager. I made the video on the other thing that happened to me. It was telepathy. A creature showed itself to me in broad daylight in a UFO with two other witnesses. I've also had ghost experiences. I share those as I go. I... I have a couple more I could share, but they're not as grandiose as the ones I've already shared. I shared my best first. But, that being said, now I'm 45 years old. I left, I left Maine when I was like 24, 25 years old, and I really never had much happen to me after that. So, I never forgot this. This haunted me. I mean, this haunted me my whole life bad. It was always in my head because it scared me so much and didn't know what it was. If it was a dream, if it was real, what the hell? So I watched some UFO shows and I see this MUFON. Um, I really should have looked up what that meant before I made this video so I could say it. Maybe I'll edit it in a picture. Anyway, I Google, Google MUFON and there's a list of different websites or whatever numbers and names and stuff so I just kind of randomly choose one and call it frigate I'm feeling bold I'm just gonna share it I've only oh by the way I never told that story to anybody my whole life other than the mother of my children I never told anybody the story because it was too f f screwed up and scary and I didn't want anybody thinking I was nuts if I even hinted that it was more than a dream. So, so I, I choose a number, call MUFON. It's not MUFON. <laughs> but as a gentleman, I, I says to him, I says, hello, uh, is this MUFON? And he goes, well, why? I'm like, well, I have uh, some UFO stories I'd like to talk about and share and, and bounce them off somebody. He goes, well, you know what, sir? I actually used to work for MUFON. Um, I forget what he said, but he was kind of high up. But they were kind of taken over by some weirdos. And he 
left and joined this other thing similar to MUFON. He goes, but I'm at work. I'm, I'm, I'm a little busy. Can I call you back in like five minutes? I'm like, okay, no problem. I give him my number, hang up. I'm thinking, this guy ain't never calling me back. This is, this is just garbage. You know, I never should have done this. I'm friggin' embarrassed. I'm an idiot. Five minutes later, he calls me back. Probably four minutes, I think it was. Because I'm staring at the clock. I share all my experiences, and mainly I tell him about this dream. He says, that wasn't a dream. He says, you realize you've had two close encounters of the third kind? I'm like, I did? He confirmed it for me. Again, to resist ridicule, I'm not saying that this isn't anything more than a dream. The other things, I don't care what anybody thinks. They happened. This certain thing, I'm not saying that it was any more than a dream, but it wasn't right. I've never had a dream in my entire life, even close to anything like this. And it terrified me a huge chunk of my life. But he confirmed it was not a dream. They are reptilians, and they disguise themselves to look like something that's familiar to you. He mentioned other forms of aliens, like the ones that look like regular people. They call them the Noors. They're usually blonde-haired, blue-eyed, six-foot-tall, regular-looking people. But there's something not right about them. He talked about them. You know, and he said that they have meetings once a month. I forget if it was in Cambridge, Mass., or if it was in Framingham, but it was a ways away from me. And he said, I, I, if I wanted, I could go there, and he told me when it was, you know, once a month, whenever I wanted to go, and there's a lot of people like me. Um, I never went. My son said he would go. My wife said she would go with me, but I never did go. I wish I had gone. I still would go if I found out where they were, I guess. But, I don't know. But, yeah, he confirmed everything so that <clears throat> I knew I wasn't crazy. Now it's up to me to decide whether this was an actual experience, a dream, or whatever. And I'm not confirming anything in this video. I'm just telling the facts. I'm not saying this was a dream. I'm not saying this wasn't a dream. Um, that's all I'm saying. So, another, I've been thinking about making this video for so long. There's so much to tell and so much to it and so much I want to express. Um, and I just had something that tipped my tongue and I lost it. That's why I'm pausing. <sighs> but, yeah, so I could go to this meeting. I decided not to go. I still would go, I still wouldn't mind checking it out, but maybe I'll look it up and go sometime, but I, I watch a lot of alien shows, ghost shows, because it interests me, because I've had so many experiences, haven't had much happen to me since I came to Massachusetts, I've had little things, not much. Oh, the other thing he told me was, these aliens follow people, they follow families, and I'm like, oh my God. He goes, you need to talk to your grandparents. He says, somebody where that alien showed itself when you were four or five years old, somebody there was being followed as well, somebody in your family. And they had experiences too. And you should probably talk to them. I talked to my grandfather before he passed away and he wouldn't even mention the word UFO, alien. He wouldn't even, I tried to bring it up casually without any fireworks kind of you know just kind of you ever seen anything weird in this guy you know huh <laughs> and he's like what do you mean helicopters you know he wouldn't even you know and my father's the same way some people to protect themselves they refuse to believe it's true i don't care if it's in their face they will refuse that it's there refuse that it's true completely ignore it because it's their survival technique not me I am absolutely whatever is that, you know, it, things are what they are, and I will not hide anything. I also speak my mind too much. I can get in trouble. Ooh, I've been in trouble. So, yeah, he wouldn't admit to it. 
so I'm wondering if my grandmother had experiences or my great grandmother, because my grandmother was so terrified. She was absolutely beside herself with fear when that UFO showed itself above the tree that I did not see. And I'm not saying I did. Uh, you know, review the tape. Look at it. And I'm not saying shit. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, they follow people. They were following me because I had three major experiences to supposedly. I'm up, 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 back up. Two supposedly were a close encounters of the third kind in my life. I've also had, like I said, many ghost experiences, and Maine is a friggin' hotbed for that stuff. So that's it. I finally shared my story, the whole thing. Uh, 24 years of experiences. If you've had an experience, I'd love it if uh, you made a comment in the bottom. Or just make a comment. Let me know what you think. You know? And uh, be cool if you liked and shared and subscribed too. If you don't, <laughs> don't. Like I've always said, I'm going to do what I do anyway. Have a good day.